So by 2020, at least one part of the International Space Station could become a timeshare. The project is called United Launch Alliance. It's a partnership between Boeing, Lockheed Martin, as well as Bigelow Aerospace. Yes, that's the name. Uh, they're currently collaborating on how to launch a habitat, which is basically the size of a small apartment, into space uh, in about the next four years. Uh, that's pretty soon, and this is pretty cool. Um, the habitat, which is called the B330, uh, it has about 330 cubic meters of living space. Uh, that's not very big at all, and it could be either attached to the International Space Station, or it might even be floating freely. At this point, we're in the infancy of this of this whole stage. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the infancy stage, yes. is what I should say. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, EULA, United Launch Alliance, they're the, they're the people behind this, and I think it's pretty cool. Um, at least, you know, in the beginning, uh, you know, you, you, I, we talk a lot about, you know, commercial space travel, for example, but like going up and staying for prolonged periods, I mean, that's pretty cool. And I know in the beginning, you know, this is probably going to be extremely expensive, mm -hmm. given how expensive something like, you know, space travel is in the first place. So getting up there is going to be a huge mission. Um, but, you know, I think as time goes on, as we see, you know, the cost of these things uh, kind of lower a little bit, I think this is going to be something that all of us are going to be enjoying, hopefully in our lifetime. Do you think that will happen in our lifetime? I or? could I could definitely see that happening in our lifetime. I mean, especially, you know, with these, uh, you know, flights to the moon and that, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's the same thing where, yes, at first it might be for the wealthy or the the elite folks, but eventually it's going to become sort of a, a commodity. Um, and I'm sorry, how, how big is the space? 330 cubic meters. Well, That's I not lived in New York City, either. man. I mean, it's like you, I've lived in some small spaces for a lot more money. So yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, this isn't New York, okay? It's not going to be that expensive. <laughs> Calm, down. <laughs> Calm down. This is space, okay? Not Manhattan, all right? Settle down. And, and apparently they want to get companies on board, big, big names like Disney, for example, and they want to basically slap their names on the side of these. Of course, they're going to want to get their hands on this because this is, let's be honest, this is the future yeah. of time sharing. I can especially see like, not even just slapping your name on a on a timeshare, but somewhere like Disney having like fun for the whole family and right. then eventually having their own little like, you know, theme parks of sorts. I hope it, you know, I hope it's it's almost resor more resort like. Yeah. I hope it doesn't just look like the inside of the International Space Station, which in itself is cool. I mean, if we're talking about the views and stuff, yeah. but if it's a timeshare, you're going to be there for like a few weeks. Like I need a tanning bed. I'm going to need They got to get a swimming pool in there, yeah. you know? <laughs> I mean, and plus you really got to like the people that you go with because yeah. you're kind of stuck with them. For sure. Yeah. So, I mean, look, for now, I think this stuff's important. You know, okay, on the surface, it's cool. Timeshares in space. Ah, what the hell? That's crazy. But mm -hmm. there, this is important on another level because these are the kind of things when we're normalizing space travel, okay, in general, with something like a timeshare that we usually think about on Earth. What that does is I think that just contributes more to the whole private sector of, of, of space travel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're seeing the rise of companies like SpaceX, for example. And that's what's really driving this technology. We can't only depend on these companies, oh, I shouldn't say companies, but these, these sectors of the government, like NASA, for example, that will have funding one year, won't have funding, depending on what's going on. Right, it, uh, depending on how many wars we might be fighting. Right, like right. private enterprise is the is the way of exactly. This. I think, uh, or at least that's how I feel about mm -hmm. it. You know, and we're seeing Lockheed Martin uh, teaming up with, you know, Scott Bigelow of Bigelow Airspace, as as well as you know. And Bigelow put in his own money, right? Exactly, hundreds so, of yeah. millions of dollars, and I think that's what's really going to drive, you know, not only the technology but like the normality of it, and and how how part of a, our everyday lives it really becomes. Yeah. Because for us, it's kind of crazy now, and it's very sci-fi. But I think in the future, this is going to be pretty normal to go up on a timeshare in space. I think it's awesome. And it could be happening as far as 2020, but not for anyone, just anyone. It's probably going to be only for millionaires, at least in the beginning. But we're going to have to see where this goes in the future.